and a good afternoon, sir. How the heck are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. How y'all doing? Uh, great. Thanks for asking. Uh, so how was practice today? That's That's been a talking point. You feeling good about practice this week? Yeah, yeah. Practice has has been going well this week for sure. Yeah, I feel good. Hey, Amari. Okay, I was watching you at the coin toss last week, and you came on the field, and you were next to President Bush's wife. And President Bush, I think, said something to you. Everybody wants to know. You put a smile on your face. What can you can you share with us what the president said to you when you were walking on the field with him? <laughs> yeah, he was like, um, he was like, um, we're walking next to the great Amari Cooper. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. That's uh, cool. How many presidents have you met? Um, him. Obama, I met Obama when we won a national championship at Bama. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Was that was that just is that a cool thing? Do you do you enjoy meeting people like that? I mean, you're such a well-read guy, well-educated guy. I mean, you just does you like to meet people that in just other walks of life? I mean, I, and how often do you get to meet a president and stuff? But just in general people, do you like to do you like to meet people like that? Um. Yeah. I, I don't really care for it, to be honest. Oh, do you? Really? What is it about the situation? Just kind of awkward? No, nah, I just... Not that it's awkward. I just don't really... Like, I don't wake up and say, hey, I, I want to meet the president. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, yeah, I was just kind of thinking, because you, you handled that so well. I was, like, watching you walk out there, and I probably thought you had a nice little conversation with him or something like that. So it's kind of cool that you you got to visit with him that way. Um, okay. You know, I was listening to you in the, your uh, media availability today, and you were talking about the drop. And that's the first drop you've had all year, though. It, it, when you go back and look at that, is it something that you're saying, the, is it a, something in your mind like it's a technical thing, it's a concentration thing, it's something that, it, that it, you're like, listen, I do this in my sleep. I could close my eyes and catch these footballs. Is it something that it just, just failed you just at that right moment, or is it uh, something else you feel like you kind of need to – work on a little bit um well honestly it's just about um being present and thinking about this situation at hand and what yeah. i mean by that is like i had so much going on like my hamstring sure. <clears throat> was bothering me um throughout the game and i think that's what i was thinking about okay like i gotta catch this ball um uh, avoid some guys or catch this ball in a in a in a non awkward way so that I don't I don't yeah. tweak my hamstring. Like that's what okay. I think I was thinking about the wrong things, you know. Instead of thinking about, you know, okay, the ball is being thrown to me right now. Look the ball all the way through, catch it, you know. Is that usually what happens in a situation like that? Your mind's distracted by something? Um you mean like if I don't catch a ball? Yeah, I mean I, it, there's always a reason you're not catching a ball. Like there's always a reason. Like the ball hits your, your hands, if it's, if, if it's a catchable ball and you, you, you don't come away with it, you can always look back and say, well, if I would have did this, that, or the third, I would have caught that ball. So, yeah, it was, it was definitely um, – there was definitely a reason I didn't catch that ball, and I, I, I can identify it, so that's a good thing. All righty. I, I, and I don't want to make the conversation all about your injuries, but can we get an update? How's the hammy feeling? Are you going to be able to, to play without thinking about that this week? Yeah, I mean, it's – it's feeling better every day. Um, today is our like our pat full pat full pat practice day. Um, it felt good. I didn't I didn't push it too much uh, to be honest, but it it I didn't feel it today. Amari, when uh, you guys go through something, you've had so much success this season as a team, and you go to Minnesota, you, you come up with a game winner, the you know, that 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 catch and all. Is it is it like one of those things when you do have a little bit of a setback? Is it? hard to put those things behind you or is it like listen I, I i don't have time for this i got you have like the 24 hour rule in your mind and like on to you know on to atlanta from that or is it something maybe there was it, it takes you a little bit longer to to move on from that because you you don't you haven't lost many games in your career but i just wondered if it's something you put behind quickly or is it something that kind of sits with you for a little bit well every year is different i think this year it's easier to be honest to put a game like that behind us because when you've had so much success, we've won six games in a row. Okay, we know we know what it takes to win. Um, and when you lose, when you haven't lost a lot, you can easily identify why that happened. You know, it's just like the drop. You know, right. I, I, it's just like 
I haven't dropped many balls this year, so I could easily identify what 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 I did wrong because I know what I've done right when I caught the balls. So the same thing, like as a team, we know what we've done right when we've won. And so when we lost, especially in the fashion that we lost, it was just easy to identify like what it was. Were you guys over there like, holy cow, how do we still not have any points? This is unbelievable. <laughs> I know I was at a certain point in the game. I was like, dang, we, we haven't scored. Like, Yeah, it was totally shocking. So how important is it to to get a win against Atlanta and and prove that that was, was just a bad week? Or, or do you even feel like you need to do that? No, nah, I mean, listen, we, I mean, it's a it's a new week. It's a new opponent. Obviously, it's going to be a tough to win again because it's the NFL, you know. Right. We just have to um, be on our P's and Q's, um, trusting uh, our preparation, and then go out there and play. We we know what we have. Um, we feel like we have a special group. Uh, we feel like we shouldn't lose any games. Um, so I think with that confidence, uh, just getting our swagger back for this week, I think we should be okay. <laughs> You know, Amari, uh, after the game, you know, it, it's easy when you're Denver to say, oh, that they haven't played the Cowboys this way. You know, oh, they nobody's tried to play the Cowboys this way. It, is, is that all BS? Or, I mean, is it, is it like, okay, you know, you guys, they, they, Denver's played you this way. Other teams have tried to play, but you guys are just better than what, you just you just caught a bad game. You know, is, is it that simple or is it, did, did Denver really kind of came up with something? Um, well, I, I didn't listen to whatever. Yeah, they were their their head coach was basically kind of you know he was he was banging his chest that you know oh, well nobody's ever played the Cowboys like this you know we 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 did this and did that you know and he, and he was making it sound like he came up with some you know kryptonite or something you guys had to deal with or something so uh, it, it, like I said is it you know he he was kind of talking about that you know maybe the more the man coverage stuff like that it, you've seen all that this year though right. Yeah, um, so here's the thing, um, you know, we give Denver full credit for coming sure. out there and competing the way that they competed. Um, and the crazy part about it, we knew that they would try to stop the run and um, and uh, and play man on the outside and kind of like do whatever they had to do to stop the run. Mm -hmm. But you got to think like me and C CD's ankle was like banged up. He had just heard it on like Wednesday. Right. You know, he could he could barely run. And it's same way with me. You know yeah. what I'm saying, like, yeah. so um, it's it's kind of funny because we invite we invite that like right. as the time go time goes on, we invite that. That's what we want. Um, it, it just caught us, it caught us on a bad week. Like we was made. I'm not trying to make any excuses, no, but like, no, man, I shoot, I could barely run. He could barely run. We're the starting receivers. You know what I'm saying. So it's easy, it's easy to cover two guys who you know can't can't mm -hmm. really do what they want to do. Yeah. Um, no excuse. We still stepped on the field, so obviously we um, we needed to do what our jobs because we decided to step on the field. But you know, uh, we 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 want to invite that that man to man coverage every week right. because it's either going to be a slow death or a fast one. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. That'll get you back to arguing in the huddle of who's going to get the pass, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Situations like that. How much do you watch other sports throughout the season? You watch basketball? Man, I don't even really watch TV no more. So nah. Really? Okay. I was gonna ask you if you'd seen the uh the uh Jokic and, and Markeith Morris situation there with the Heat and Nuggets game the other night. I saw that on Instagram though. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> it was kind of funny. There's a lot of debate going on. Was 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 that a dirty foul? And and what'd you think about uh Jokic's reaction uh pushing him from behind like that? I I didn't rewatch it enough to say whether or not it was a dirty foul. It looked like I think I watched it once or twice. It doesn't look like it was a dirty foul. It looked like it was in innocence, but I, I could be wrong. Um, but, I, you know, the way that he handled that situation, I mean, he just – sometimes you got to let it be known that, you know, you're not the guy. Mm -hmm. You're not the guy that that can happen to. So I can't say whether he was right or wrong either, but I'm pretty sure that that's what – that's the stand he took. Yeah, that's what a lot of, of athletes that have been in those situations are saying. Okay, did you see uh, Bears and Steelers and how that ended Monday night? Cassius Marsh got a taunting penalty for just looking at the sideline. Didn't even require a, a wave or a smile. As a guy like that doesn't get into the taunting, at least from what we can tell watching, should the NFL be coming down so hard on it like this? <clears throat> uh, I didn't see that play. Like I said, I don't... <laughs> 
I don't really be watching TV like that. I do, um, like, if, if there's a game on that I want to see, I will turn the TV on for it, but I didn't see that particular game. Um, but if the NFL should be coming down, um, it's just weird. Like, every year during training camp, the referees come in and they talk to the team. Yeah. And they um, talk about the new rules that have been put in place. And I always just thought that was kind of weird because it seems like there's a quota, like, they're saying every year, okay, we got to implement a new rule or two new rules. And it's just, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that should necessarily happen. Is it too much, you think, Amari? I mean, instead of just letting you guys go out there and let the players decide these games, you know? I mean, that's where I was always uh, thinking about this. Let let Amari Cooper go decide this game today. Yeah, I mean, I don't think about it from that aspect, though. I think about it like... I, just like with every business, they, they have an a algorithm in place and they say, you know, um, we get more viewership when this happens or this happens or that mm -hmm. happens, you know. And so it's just maximize profits, you know. That's how I'm looking at it from the NFL standpoint. Like, sure. Um, maybe taunting um, because I've heard a lot of fans over time, o over, the over time say like things like, oh, I'm not going to watch games because they – that was um that wasn't very they didn't show a lot of uh sportsmanship or this that and the third so usually when they come down with these rules it's usually about you know making money hmm. Maury, okay this week you guys have you know with the falcons and you know, cordell patterson is over there on the other side for the falcons and here's a guy that's a kick returner receiver playing running back you're the type of guy that could probably be if 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 you could be that kind of guy, couldn't you? You could be the guy that goes and lines up at running back with the toughness, do all those kind of things. Corner, yeah, corner. I mean, yeah, we obviously know you can cover anybody on this team, but <laughs> but is is there a guy like you know Patterson? Do are do receivers not get enough credit for the toughness that they have like that to be able to go in there and play for their team at running back or wherever they need them? Uh, yeah, I see. I played with Cordell when when we were at the Raiders together for like two years. Yeah, so, um, he's a very special football player. Um, you can line him up anywhere on that off. Well, you just need to put the ball in his hands. Really. Sure. Would you call him rare? Would you call him a rare football player? I mean, rare in the way of all the different things he can do. I would. I would call him rare because uh -huh. um, to be that big and that yeah. cause Cordell's like man, he's like two twenty, yeah, two twenty five, two thirty, yeah. Um, and he's rolling. He's a real fast guy. To be that that, that big and fast, um, that's rare in itself. Um, but I do think um, more guys can do, can show a lot of a lot more versatility in the league. And that's one of the things that I think over time will happen. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't happened yet because you got to think we all come from um, high school to where we played corner, yeah. receiver, running back, and then you get to the NFL. You play one position. They pay you. Sorry, they pay you for one position when you could be used for more sometimes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they pay a lot of other pros for the other positions. But, you know, sometimes you get on a team to where you might be the best receiver and the best corner. Or you might get on the team, you might be um, the best offensive line and one of the best defensive linemen. And it's like, I'm sure that that happens a lot in the league. But it just doesn't get used the way that it that it could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I was I was going to ask you. Okay, you got another. It's rare that you get the Cowboys get back to back noon games. Are you a fan of the noon game? I mean, are you like getting up, get going, and and getting on with your business and kind of moving on, or would you rather those things? I you know that the three twenty five game or the night game. Do you have a yeah. preference on that? <clears throat> I'm not a noon game fan, but um, a lot of players are. I think it all. Um, comes down to whether you're a morning person or not. I'm not really a morning person, but some guys and some guys wake up at six o'clock every day, seven o'clock every day. They prefer the noon games because they just want to play and then have the rest of the day. Right. It's like having two off days. Sure. But no, I'm, I, w I would much rather play at night. Um, but, you know, the noon games are cool too because of what I just mentioned. But I would rather play at night. I like night games better for sure. Amari, well, thanks again for a fantastic visit. Give him hell on Sunday. We'll be pulling for you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.